Qatar is the venue for the opening race of the FIA World Endurance Championship for 2024. Green flag starts. The season opener for the FIA World Endurance Championship. A new golden, golden, golden era of sports car racing begins here in Doha, Qatar. We are racing for the first of 335 laps. The number five Porsche on pole position. The Ferrari's already making a move around the outside, and that's Miguel Molina around the outside to try and take the lead into the first corner. Toyota's run wide, a spinning Peugeot, and it is the Ferrari that has the lead from the number five Porsche that started on pole position. And again, there is some of the value of knowing how to warm these tyres up that they learned the hard way last year. Ferrari and Porsche and Peugeot leaving the newcomers behind. An amazing, aggressive start there from Miguel Molina in the Ferrari number 50. Round the outside, he pinched. Oh, it was unfortunate for Paul Dressler. I've just seen that. Yeah. So the caddy, I think, got a bit pinched into turn one. To so looking back here from one of the Penske Porsches, is this? Yes. Yeah. There's the and caddy in the, the middle. Caddies. This is on board with uh, number six. The caddy is behind. Woo! They had a get out of jail free card there, didn't they? There's Robert Kubica locking up, going wide. What I really want to see is who hit Alex Lynn up the back into turn one. Because that, that triggered that whole sequence. Oh, and that was a late dive, wasn't it? And there's the contact. Managed to get out the gravel. That was where the gravel came from that yeah. we didn't see. The uh, contact, by the way, between the Lexus and the 88 was at the start of lap two. OK, so that is multi four off, multi four off. Very good job, mate, very good job. Elbows out now, elbows out. That'll be their launch control system or whatever uh, to give him maximum in the first lap. I would say stick to plan, Michael. Yeah, what is plan? Should I try to push him or not push, but should I push, try to get by? That's my question. Keep your tires under you. Keep the tyres under you. So this is going to be the big thing for them. Uh, I mentioned that you've got the tyre graining as a possibility, especially when the track is a bit more green at the start of the race before the rubber starts to get laid down. Looking at the GT class, the yellow Corvette is the leader, Tom Van Rompuy. Then the white Porsche, Alexander Malikin with the yellow highlights in second place, ahead of D-Stations, Clement Mathieu in the Aston Martin. Running ball with Van Tour, he's going to look to the inside. Conway wants to cover it, he does, so he's going to switch to the outside. And on the braking into turn one, and he's going to get the job done here by the looks of it. He runs right round the outside onto the dusty part, but what a move that was. Yeah, Excellent stuff. fantastic stuff. Move up the order from the number six Porsche. Sarah Bovey that and who started 46? It was Ahmed Al Harty, the man who qualified that car. There was a touch there between the Lambo and the BMW. In the GT3 category, they would have never seen anything like this in their life of, as being a racing driver. <laughs> and it is cat and amongst the pigeons, isn't it? They are darting left, right, center through these, through these GT3s. That was pretty audacious stuff down into turn one. And that would have been that moment that we saw before, as this is so oh, close in turn 13, 14. Is that going to give the Peugeot a chance? It is. Yes, it is. We'll have to go the long way around the outside, the Peugeot. That's not really going to work, is it? Nico Muller giving it everything. These, these guys are trying to save their tyres. Apparently, it does look like the final he's, 10 he's minutes of he's the got Formula it. Ford race. What a cracking move. Yeah, absolutely. Now down into turn one at the lead of the race. Whoa. Outright, I think Molina might just make this difficult for Muller on the outset. Gives him room though, yeah. and it's going to be the Peugeots towards wow. turn two. Well, that's exactly the move that Molina pulled on the front row of the grid to take the lead at the start. The long way round the outside gives you the tight entrance into corner two, and that's a big move. Now they see the move oh, into turn six. Wow, from Will and Sunco, the number six car, the other Penske car, like looking to dive through as well. So a bit of opportunism from Lawrence Van Tor, nearly dive bomb Michael Christensen. Information to pit line, car 50-50 has a drive-through penalty for crossing the white line at pit entry. <laughs> the drivers know this, and you go through this with your with your team as well. Prior to oh. the race, you have lots of briefings. Muller running wide through turn one. Lead change. It is that was because of traffic, so he went to go around the outside, got on the dust, and now he's staring at the back end of our new race leader, Laurent Van Tour. Finally, we see the Porsche 
out in front. 50 or 51, which is it? And that is double yellow, that's turn 16, that's the final corner. Did one of the Ferraris just come in? Uh, um, uh, let's take a look, what have we found? What happens here? Well, that's it the just separates. He's had contact somewhere as well, hasn't well, he? Well, well, well. These things are built to withstand the Mulsanne. Wow, see how it almost spun oh, the car? Almost, almost. Full course yellow is normally going to be for a lap or at most two. No worries, they're on different tyre. We keep going. You still have two cars behind you. Keep going. I got overtaking around the outside. What the hell? Well, we still have six and a half hours to make up on it, so no worries. Keep going. You're doing good. You're doing good. Yeah, you can get overtaken around the outside if you're on different tyres. There's so much performance in it. And now she's under attack on the inside. Yeah, the Sean BMW Galeo through. in the BMW as the Peugeot comes through. And the, the, the BMW jumped the Corvette because the Corvette had a look, got held up, and Galeo went right by both of them in, in a lap. And now the Corvette passed as well. Yeah. Sure. This might have been the, uh, the opportunity that Pierre Guidi was looking for. A bit of traffic has helped him out here as they not... run up towards the fast corner of turn 12. He's trying to go around the outside and he makes it work. Brilliant stuff between these two. Now, Valentino Rossi is also under similar time restraints. He's a silver graded driver, so again, he's got to do the two and a half hour minimum drive time. And then Maxi Martin, platinum, can do as much or as little as the regulations allow. So now watch this, he's going to move the steering wheel. He did this yeah. yesterday in practice. Don't use girls for three laps. You can push, but don't use girls, please, for tires. Well, it's, it's an interesting one. It, they're clearly seeing extra wear from going over the curbs. I've, I've never actually heard that one before. Maybe uh, they're talking about traction events. So we look back at Mick Schumacher in the car number 36. Alpine, a new experience for Mick. Good race here as well for Team WRT's 31 car, the one that's not got the motorcycling superstar in. Darren Leung, the reigning British GT champion, doing a good job up till now of holding off Alessia Rivera, much more experienced in, in international sports car racing. Oh, oh problem oh, with the oh, left oh. rear wheel gun there. Can't get any purchase on it at all. Oh, wow. Finally, the wheel comes off, but that's such a rare mistake. I don't call remember mistake. seeing that from Toyota before. Mechanical problem inside the pits, and yeah, the, even the, <laughs> the Ferrari team watching on in disbelief as well. well that's the Proton car, oh, it's down the inside. That's a great move, just slinging it down the inside. So it was a late dart to the inside, very late on the brakes. Yeah. He arrived and uh, Floor wasn't expecting that, but I think the move was on. That was a pro racing driver move. And oh, on the side, whoa, a biff that for the 78, of the 78 Lexus. Lexus. I think there's damage to that Lexus as well. I think there was smoke from the rear, it was oh. smoke to the rear of that car. Matt Campbell in number five Porsche. Battling with the number seven Toyota. This is now for sixth position. Outside, outside, you're clear. Oh, yes, oh, it he was has. Over that gravel. It was over that gravel field. And Wait. lucky to keep that out of the barrier as well there. Well, he had gone down the inside. Probably a little bit too late into uh, turn nine. And it's where you look at the... Oh, there's, there's the dive down the inside that I was expecting at some point. Bottinger, oh, and there you go. That's how, yeah, that's how, that's how you play it. So, uh, you know, it, I, I, I appreciate that that's because, yeah, it yeah. is fair enough. Fair and enough. I think. So this is riding on board with the number six Porsche of Kevin Estra. There's the Lexus in front. He's off the track. Well, went to the then then that. Uh, yeah, he's off the track. He's off the Fired track. Fired him off. Bits I mean, fly off the car as well. I, 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 which of the Porsches? was it that was inside the Lexus? May have been no contact, but it was definitely looking. one of the two. Oh, did you see, by the way, that tyre that just came off the left rear? Oh, he did go right over the white line. He's going to have fair. to give that back. All yeah. right, he was forced off, you would say, by Collado. That's an interesting one. Mm. He did take the car right over. We see this quite often in Monza, don't we, on the main straight. So that's another one. Now oh, the stewards are getting busy towards the end of this race. 
Collado did nothing wrong there. You can defend your position if it's one motion, which he did. There wasn't any, you know, there weren't any extra he weaves. He used the track and nothing more. He just, he just sweeped over to the right-hand side in one fluid motion and just stuck his car on the white line. OK, Kevin, we are going to box next lap. We'll box next lap for a short stop for a quick repair. Yeah, we're going to repair the bit where you didn't hit anybody. If it was a bronze, then I think that's asking a lot. In the pit lane. To, to get out the way. Seven to go. Yeah, they're going to clean the, the car to try and make it stick on. And stick on the panel. Um, still haven't put any position marker lights, which are also a requirement on the cars. There's your leader in GT3, the white Porsche that if Marco Sain could somehow get by Klaus Bachler with five laps remaining, then he might be able to hold up the Porsche. With two laps to go. Penske are going to win this. Who's going to be second? Still don't know. Peugeot, Jota, Penske. It's, it's the Peugeot. Oh. It's the Peugeot. But it's, it's not the 94. Yeah, it's the 93. It's, it's the 93. The Peugeot is off the podium in one fell swoop. Kalaminas is second for Jota. The number five Peugeot, Penske is third. Oh. And the Peugeot of jean Eric Van it's suddenly disappeared backward. No power, no power. No power. Unbelievable. Starting his final Stop. lap uh, now. Please go as far as you can. Penske Porsche, there's Roger Penske, 87 years young, on hand to witness their first win in the FIA World Endurance Championship this year. They claim pole position and they will take their first win in the World Endurance Championship in the 10-hour season opener. Victory for Porsche and Penske Racing. Second place is in the balance though. Jota in second, Penske in third, racing to the line. It will be a Porsche sweep of the podium. Penske first and third, with Jota's privateer Porsche taking second. Yes, yes, we won it. What a drive, what a car, what a team, what a potential we have here. Yeah, yeah, fucking amazing job. The ecstasy and the agony, because this too is sport. Celebration for Andre Lotterer, Kevin Est and Lawrence Van Tor. The perfect start to their season and one they could barely have imagined, leading a Porsche clean sweep. It was a bit crazy. To be honest, I, I didn't thought I was taking risk in traffic, but somehow, I don't know, well, we didn't understand each other a few times with some guys and I had a massive hit with the Lexus. And after that, we had a lot of vibration, lost quite some grip. Uh, but we did the last one and a half hour like this. And uh, when he told me pit this lap, I was like, please, no. But in the end, it was just a short repair and everything OK. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a tough end. Definitely made it uh, spicy to the end. But uh, thanks a lot to the whole team. I mean, they made, a, made an amazing car for this weekend. No, no issues. So I'm really, really pleased and, and happy uh, where we where we end up today compared to where we started last year. It's quite a, an amazing uh, jump. And yeah, thanks a lot to my teammates and, and to the whole uh, Porsche Penske team. Victory in GT3 for Porsche as well. Mantai Pure Racing, Alexander Maliki and Joel Sturm and Klaus Bachler take the first win of the new era. Aston Martin completing the podium, second and third. Celebrations, the new season is underway. The platinum era of sports car racing begins with one of the stalwarts, Penske and Porsche, claiming the first win as Porsche sweep the hypercar podium. A big points haul to start the season for Porsche, heading the manufacturer standings from Cadillac. But our winning crew of the number six Porsche Penske machine will be leading the driver's standings when we head to our next race. And with points and a half for victory here, they have a big head start on their competition. Of 37 starters, only four cars had mechanical problem before the end. And then the Peugeot making it to the line 
but it does not get classified as a finisher. It didn't make it into Park Ferme. And that is it. The new era is underway. Hypercar and GT3 provided 10 hours of wall-to-wall -wall entertainment. And they'll do the same again at round two in Imola in Italy. Will it be the same names at the top of the heap? Don't bet on it. It will be fascinating to watch. And we will see you there.